But again, maybe you might lose Florida and you might lose New York because it's going to be underwater. So people, maybe in the next 10 years, sell your property quick in Florida unless you want to, you know, buy a boathouse and anchor it over your regular house. I don't know. I actually did just that. I had built a three-story home in Florida right on the water, on the intercoastal waterway. And um, the first few years I was there, it was just fine. And then it got to where there were water surges uh, once or twice a year coming up over my seawall, inundating my yard and uh, my garage. And I just decided it was time to leave. And I sold the place and moved up to North Carolina, inland, by the way. <laughs> yeah, if you better be inland on a high hill. I have a friend, I don't want to mention his name, but he lives in Florida right by the water. And he says ever so often the water almost comes into town. It just, all of a sudden it comes in, you know. We're talking thousands of feet. And that is scary because that's never happened. He said that's only been happening like the last two years. Well, I think the average um, elevation of Florida is about three feet above sea level. And when I was living there, we had a, a creek in the house called Alligator Creek. And the town of Punta Gorda was uh, six, seven miles away. And But the water would flow into the creek and back all the way up into town or near the outskirts of the town. And people were having flooding problems in Miami. Uh, they get uh, high tides and water comes shooting up out of all the manhole covers now in flooding streets, and the slightest storm is causing problems. There's no doubt that we are suffering a uh, global warming and that it is causing a sea rise. The question is, what's the cause? That is the interesting point. I wonder, actually, you know, I read back, supposedly HARP was shut down and then given over to a university in Alaska but then I've also seen other poor, uh, reports that supposedly the CIA is still running HARP. So I don't know. I don't know which one to believe. Well, uh, the last I heard, the government was still sort of in control, although supposedly not. But if you try to go on the property, you can't get on the property. So I'm not sure. Uh, like you, I'm, I'm not sure. And uh <laughs> There's so the, the problem is there's so much vagueness about all of this. It's so hard to pin it down. It, we, we have all these theories, but you need evidence to support them. And that's what I try to do with my books. And I try to get it from different sources so that, uh, for instance, you can have some hoaxes with stuff that's buried. Sure, I'm not why, sure why they do it in 1763 or 1844, but it's possible. You know, but when you start getting hundreds and even thousands of these things happening over several centuries, you have to begin to say, okay, not all of this can be a hoax, and why would anyone go to such trouble like with those screws in the Ural Mountains? In any case, it would be a horrendous effort to hoax that. Even now, you'd have to somehow machine all those parts and seed them down there that deep in the soil over a vast region. It just doesn't make sense. So you have to come up with an alternative. And I think time travel is the alternative. The other, there's another theory, too. It could be that uh, aliens in our past, in our history, have been here and for a long time, and they've been interfering, and this is their um, discards, their debris left behind. That could be it, too. We may just be looking at the leftover detritus of um, UFOs. I question that because some of that detritus is so human-like that it makes you wonder if aliens would ever have that in the first place. I don't. I, I think they wouldn't use that type of technology and it, it, be able to reach Earth anyway. I know that they have to use time travel to reach Earth. They they would absolutely have to because, you know, just in the news, like yesterday, Rob, they, they found another galaxy that they didn't even know it was there. You know, it, it kind of, you go into these new galaxies and that's just today or yesterday. Then a week ago, they found another galaxy. So we're finding more and more galaxies where life can exist. And that is probably where we're being visited. Are they going through a black hole? Speaking about black holes, they just found a huge, massive, massive black hole that they thought. Well, yes, I read that. Equivalent to eight, uh, eight million of our suns, I believe they said, was the mass of the thing. Eight million of our suns. It's incredibly big. And it's incredibly old as well. Well, that makes you wonder. And then back about a couple months ago. They, they, they said that it's so far away that it's too close to the Big Bang, and according to current theory, uh, this should not have formed, had, had enough time to form to get that big. So they don't, so they don't know how it does it. And, and there's also a star that is so old, they call it Methuselah, and it seems to predate the age of the universe itself. 
this black hole is like another candidate for that. And uh, they did find one large galaxy you're talking about, but they also found a bunch of others oh, yeah. that are really, really far out, so really far back in time. And they seem to be too well formed to have existed at that time that we're seeing them from. So uh, there, there's a big question now about what is the actual age of our universe? I, I think that we don't even know. I, I think it's so much older than what our scientists believe it is. And then about a month and a half ago, there was a black hole that they've been monitoring and they actually saw for the very first time something emerging out of the black hole which they have always thought it would be impossible that if something got in a black hole, it would be tore apart and shredded and it would be gone. It'd be history. But then, no, something came out of a black hole. So is that how they do time travel from a planet or from a different solar system to get to our galaxy? They, do they go through black holes, one for another to get here? Maybe that's, you know, that right there could be proof that there is time travel. Absolutely. And like with wormholes, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll come up at the same point in time that you entered. You might not even end up in the same universe. They may be tunnel effects, uh, you know, between parallel universes. So, yeah, we're not sure uh, what the deal is with those things. But we do know that when you get very close to a black hole, time does very strange things because some of these black holes are spinning, quite a few of them, at close to the speed of light. And uh, the closer you get to it, the more you are affected by this because the drag on space-time around a black hole is it, basically like sticking a spoon in a cup of coffee and stirring it. And uh, But you're stirring space and time, space-time. So, I mean, what and how could you do stuff with that? I mean, if you got near it, could you propel yourself into the future. There's one theory that if you um, were to reverse orbit a rotating black hole, it would throw you back in time. Now, I can't throw you back in time before the black hole existed, but some black holes have been around for billions of years. Yeah, well, maybe that, it's, you know, where your screws came from, I don't know. It, it's so many things out there, you know, and it's you got to have an open mind because, again, I do feel this planet was rebooted. I think, yes, there is aliens that we are being visited by UFOs. I, I, th again, there's so many things that if you really think about it and read about, like you talk about these weather things that have just, you know, kept from other countries being invaded, uh, all of a sudden just happen out of the blue, blue moon. Maybe again, somebody out there has the capability to manipulate the weather, manipulate time and, and everything. And we wouldn't even realize it. The human race wouldn't realize if we were even being manipulated by time or anything. No, because every time they make a change in time, that becomes a part of our accepted history. Uh, if someone went back in time and killed, say, your great aunt, you remember your great aunt as having died. You don't remember as having lived out her life and dying peacefully in old age. The way you remember it is, and, and again, that's that Mandela effect of thing. Are some of us remembering the original way it was, and some of us, and, but most of us are not? Is that why we have all these Mandela effects and disparity? Is it because someone's messing with our timeline to such an extent, and it's creating ripples and waves that change some things but not others, like the memories of people? or maps, or images of globes and movies and television shows. Something has to account for this. And again, it's the principle of Occam's razor. We can come up with dozens of uh, explanations for each one of these things separately, but there is one that takes care of all of it, and that is time travel. It does. Now, we're down to a few minutes. Do you have a website that you can tell the listeners where they can check up on you, on you and your books and what's going on with you? Sure, I have a blog spot. They can just go to that. It's robshelsky.blogspot.com. Or they can just go to Amazon, and all my books are there, and they can um, wade through them. <laughs> okay. What is, your, of all the bi uh, books you've written, Rob, what is the most favorite one that you've written? Well, that's hard to say because I have such an interest in so many things. I like Time Travel Invasion. I like Mandela Effect. I like The Darker Side of the Moon They Are Watching Us. And I like The Hollow Moon book. Uh... I guess those would be my favorites. Yeah, the hollow moon effect. We're going to get, have to get you back on in about a month or so, and we need to talk about that one. <laughs> you 
a glutton for punishment, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're a great guest. And, you know, it, it, it's it, I like not talking about UFOs every single time I do a show. And talking about time travel and some of these other things really are interesting. And I you don't hear much about it on the radio. No, and lately I've been getting interested in quantum immortality because it would be a nice idea to think that we might live forever or for a very long time. So that's one of the things I'm researching right now. There's so many things to discover and explore in this universe. Oh, there is. Like I have a friend that believes we're nothing more than a piece of uh, programming that we don't really exist. We're nothing more than on a chip. And he is so serious on this to the point I got, I gave up talking to him for a long time because that's all we talked about. Either the earth being flat or, you know, uh, he, he just goes on and on that, you know, we're not really, we're not even flesh and blood. We're just nothing more than a computer program. I'm sure you heard those well, th- stories too. Let's just say we are, uh, that the entire universe isn't founded on mathematics. It is mathematics. So maybe your friend is right. Well, I don't want to think about that. But anyway, <laughs> hey, Rob, I want to thank you for coming on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. Well, thanks so much for having me. I always enjoy talking with you. Okay, Rob. Well, you take care, and I'll contact you about getting you on in the next month or two again, and we'll talk about the moon. Okay, great. And uh, you have the rest of the evening, and have a good time. And, and don't be nervous about when they turn that camera on on you. There's nothing to be nervous about. I'll remember you saying that, and I'll still be nervous. <laughs> okay, my friend, you take care. <laughs> you too, sir. Okay, Bye-bye. night. But anyway, again, I want to welcome the new radio station. Uh, it starts picking us up again tomorrow on Green, in Greenwater, Washington. Uh, I'm going to put a link this weekend up to the radio station, so if you live in the Greenwater area, you'll be able to listen to our show live. Uh, they will carry our show live starting in September. Till then, they're going to be running replays till September 1st. So anyway, we'll uh, be on tomorrow with my uh, guest host, uh, James Krishbaum Jr. Uh, He's going to have a uh, great uh, guest on talking about UFOs. So everybody, I just want to say, take it easy. You'll catch me live again on Monday. And uh, you guys have a great weekend and take care. Provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com.